Hello, YouTube. Colorful Codes here. Uh, today, I wanted to do a new series um, called Quarantine and Code. So I saw the hashtag on Twitter, and I thought that it would be cool just to keep myself busy because I feel like I don't have any new material to talk about Microsoft uh, until a few weeks from now. So in the meantime, I'm just going to do a bunch of algorithms. Um, also, just want to apologize for my microphone. I just found, I just realized that it sounds really not good. Uh, so my next tutorial will be with a nice professional microphone. Um, today I'm going to do the flood fill algorithm. Um, the flood fill algorithm, it's a graph question. Uh, I'm going to be using depth first search. Uh, you should definitely watch a depth first search video before this. Um, because this isn't a depth first search algorithm tutorial. Um, also, <laughs> this is very similar to my number of islands tutorial that I did a few years ago. So if you want, the code is very similar, like there's like 10% difference. Um, so just go to that if you if you want to do some more exploring. But anyways, this flood fill, I'm going to share my screen. Um, here. This flood fill question is from Leap Code. And I'm going to just show y'all how it goes. Uh, normally, I draw on a, on a board, but I can't. So I'm just going to show you what the grid will look like. Um, I actually tried to draw it out, but this does not look good. <laughs> right here, Leap Code's thing. So let me zoom in. All right, so basically we're given this flood fill algorithm and our goal is basically, we're gonna be given a point, a uh, starting row and starting column. So here you can see we're given starting row of one and a starting column of one. Uh, in, in code, uh, we normally start from zero index. So we're at zero, this is index zero, this is index one, and this is index two. So here you can see we are at one, one. So row one and column one. Uh, so what we want to do is that we want to give this, uh, this point, our starting point, we want to color it to a two. Um, and essentially this whole flood fill algorithm is basically going to give us um, an old color, which is the starting point old color. So what you saw was one is our old color, uh, and we want to turn the old color to two. Um, and we're only going to look up, uh, down, right, and left. So there's no diagonal. Um, and we also can't change anything that's not the old color. So we're, we're only going to be changing ones in this case. Whatever is, whatever the point that first gives us, whatever number is at that, that's what, that's going to be the old color and we're going to change it into a new color. So two is basically the new color in code. Um, and so if we look up, that will be a two. We look to the left, that will be a two. We look down, that will be a two. We also look down again, that will be a two. Um, same thing over here. And then this will be a two. So yeah, so this is how it will look at the end. Um, we can't change this one to a two because there is no other way to access it. Uh, here is the farthest it can look. This two over here, this is the farthest and this is the farthest it can look. So um, we can't change zero, we can't, we can't change any of these. Um, so this, as you can see, is the output. So we have two, 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 zero, and two, zero, one. So I just put it in a grid format for you. So let's get started. I also think that I need a light because this um, nighttime coding, no bueno. All right, so to start out, um, I'm gonna do uh, the, the function. So we're gonna call this flood fill. Let me put my classes on. All right, we're gonna call this flood fill. And actually, let me. And we're going to give it a self as inheritance. We're going to give it a grid. I know it says image here, but I like to use all 2D arrays to be grids. Um, and then I'm going to give it a row and a column. 
I'm not going to do this starting row SR and then starting and then starting column because I feel like when people are going through the code or whenever I put my code down, I want it to be readable and understandable. So I'm just going to do that. Um, and also I'm going to put a new color. So as you can see, um, oops. these are the inputs that are given. So the input is an image. This is a grid starting starting row, starting column here, and then new color, all right? So we don't know anything about the old color yet. So first thing that we're gonna do is that we're going to set the old color. So the old color is basically gonna be grid uh, row and grid column. Let me actually get this back. And I wanna keep it down here. Uh, just you know so that i can do a walkthrough as well all right so if you can see this is grid grid of the row and the column so if we were given one one this is what it would be one one would be here um and then after that we have our first if statement so if the new color equals the old color i'll be i'll be using camel case that's that's more JavaScript, but um, it's whatever. And then I'm just gonna return the grid because if the new color is the old color, it doesn't make sense. So we would just return it because there's nothing to fill. Um, and then now we're gonna use recursion. So I'm going to do, I'm gonna call a recurse function um, and I'm gonna give it a grid. I'm gonna give it a row, a column, new color, and old color so this is going to call a, se a completely separate um, function um, and then afterwards once it calls that function i'm going to return a new grid um, and then i'm just going to go over here Oops. all right so now i'm going to create the new function here we have a uh, recurse and like i said it takes grid it takes row call a uh, new color and old and old color um, and now i'm going to do the first if statement this is very important so we're going to do if grid row and call does not equal old color this is this is mostly the line that changes it from number of islands um, we're going to return completely. So if we're given a grid, like say we're on this number, if we're given here and it says two, we're just going to return because we have to, we're, we're only doing this, we're doing this algorithm to change the old color to the new color. So we're just going to return. Um, so make sure, this is just making sure that uh, it's not a one. But if it is a one in this case, we're going to color it to a two. So row, call um, equals new color, which is two. Um, and then I'm going to do the, the magic, basically, the recursion. Uh, so the way that I'm gonna follow it is I'm gonna look up, left, right, and then down. So first we're gonna check if row does not equal, does not equal zero. Um, recurse, oops, grid, row minus one. So if the row, basically when I say row does not equal zero, basically when I'm saying row does not equal zero, I wanna make sure that the row, as you can see, we have zero, one, two. If it was row zero, there's no way to look above it. So we can only look above when we're on row one and then row two. So if it's not zero, then we can look, um, then we can look above. So basically, since this is hypothetically, if this were one, we would do row, so basically one minus one, and then it would equal, it would be equal to zero. So we can look right above it. So row minus one, and then call, and then new color, the same. 
um, and then old color. And I'm also gonna use Python Tutor just for a little bit, just so that you understand. I'm just gonna post this code into Python Tutor just to do a walkthrough. Um, yeah. So then now we're gonna check, uh, I, I should put it also here. Um, this should look up, all right. And then I'm gonna say if call does not equal uh, zero. So basically also I wanna make sure that I'm not on the zero index of the column. So this is zero, this is one, and this is two. If I'm here, I can't, there's nothing to my left of me. So I wanna make sure that I'm in row one or row two so that I can look to the left at row zero. So um, I'm gonna make sure that I'm not in row one and then I can call this again. So I can do a recur recurse grid. And I'm gonna do row the same, but column will be a minus one. And then I'm gonna, it's gonna take the new color. Uh, it's also gonna take the old color. Um, and then now we're going to check the right. So this part I'm gonna do, uh, if call, um, does not equal length of grid zero. And then I'm gonna say minus one. Okay, so what's happening here is, so the length of grid zero, so this is, this is grid zero. And you can see it has three items. So if it has three items, that means it has three columns. So, the only way to look, like for example, um, sorry. <laughs> I wanna make sure that I'm not on row two because if I am, if I am on row two, I won't be able to look right. So when I'm doing grid zero, the length of it is equal to three when it, when it checks the length and then it's saying minus one, so then that would be two. So then it's checking to make sure I'm not on row two in this case because I can't look to the right. But yeah, so that's what that code means. I'm just gonna do the same thing. So recurse grid, uh, it's gonna take row, then it's gonna look ahead. So call plus one. So it could look one column ahead if it's on row zero or, or row one. Um, new color, and then old color. And then now we get to look down. So I'm gonna say if row does not equal the length of grid, and then this is just gonna be minus one. So as you can see, if we were to take the length of the whole grid, the grid has three items because the rows, one, two, three. And then when it takes the length, it's gonna do, it's gonna be three, so then it's gonna minus one. So it's gonna be two. So it wants to make sure that we're not on the last, <laughs> we're not on the last row of the of the grid, which is two, because we can't look down if we're on the last one. So we can only look down if we're on row zero, and then if we're on row one. Um, and then we're going to do recurse again. Gonna take the grid. Uh, gonna take row plus one, so we can look ahead one. Um, call new color, old color. And that should be it. Um, yeah, so let's see if it runs. Um, let me comment this out. Why am I trying to save? Okay, submit. Uh, yeah, so it's submitted. Um, and I also am gonna have the code here. I have it also, I posted it. I'm just gonna do one little quick edit uh, just to add that class in there. Um, and yeah, this is the code. So basically it's changed the whole, it's colored the whole uh, grid and then it's just gonna return it here. So once it finishes, it's gonna come back and it's gonna return. So now I'm just gonna do a quick uh, Python visualization. Python Tutor is the best tool that you need when you're trying to understand algorithms. Don't depend on it, but it's amazing. So here's Python Tutor and here's the code. I don't have the class here. Um, so basically it's just gonna define the two. 
and here it's taking the grid. Look at this. So here we have zero, one, and two. All right, and then it's going to define, oops, it defines old color. So old color here, uh, old color was row one and uh, column one. So what that got was one, and then it's gonna check if new color equals old color. So we're just gonna pass that. And now it's going to take all these arguments, all these arguments here, um, and it's going to put it all in this new function, this recurse function. Um, so then now this is checking to see if it's the old color, if it, no, it's checking to see that uh, grid um, one, one isn't the old, is, is not the old, wait, wait. <laughs> does not equal if grid row and call does not equal the old color return, but it does equal the old color. So it's gonna continue. And then now here it's going to color it too, see? And then it's gonna check if row does not equal zero, which it doesn't equals one, it's going to put in all these arguments and it's, look, looky here. <laughs> It's gonna row, it's gonna do row minus one. So now row is gonna be zero. And you see, this is how recursion works. That's why I, I, I advise you to use Python tutors so that you understand. So now it has the function and it's checking over here. So basically right now we are over here, we are at uh, column one and then row zero. And it's gonna see if the color does not equal old color, but it does. So it's gonna color that. And then it's gonna check if, if it is, if row does equal zero, which it does. So then it's just going to, it's gonna um, pass that. But then it's gonna to look to its left and it's gonna see if column does not equal zero. And right now column doesn't equal zero, it equals one. So it's gonna call that. And now it's gonna be zero, zero, as you can see right here. So then, here we have the arguments passed in, checking that it's not the old color, which it is, so it's gonna skip that if statement. Then it's gonna color right here to be two. Um, yeah, it's just gonna continue like that uh, all the way until the end. Um, and let me just get to the last, the previous. And as you can see, this is just like the algorithm that I showed you of what it's supposed to be, uh, what it's supposed to look like at the end. So yeah, so I hope this was helpful. Um, I definitely wanna do more algorithms for you all. And I think I'm going to do a um, blog post with this. And yeah, this microphone, I'm sorry y'all. But uh, if you have any more questions, just let me know in the comment section because I'll have the blog post below. Uh, and uh, any questions that you have, I can answer them on there, on the blog post, on my Twitter, at Colorful Codes, my Instagram, at Colorful Codes. Um, and I'm doing further tutorials because some people ask, asked me for them. So I have about like five in queue. So if you ask for any more, you'll be number six in queue. All right, so let me know if you have any further questions. And yeah, I hope this helped. So thank you for watching Fuerzo and Python. Take care and good night.